All right, grade five. This is the new science unit, the Earth System. So our first lesson is going to be on water shortages and water solutions. So first we're gonna start off with some discussion about water use. So take a moment to get ready for this work. You're gonna need something to write with, to take notes on. I suggest a notebook and a pen. Pause this video if you need to go ahead and get that. All right, so take a look at this globe. Looking at this globe, try and think about where do you think most of the water is on Earth? And what kind of water is on Earth? You look over here, here's the United States, we're over here in New York, this is the Atlantic Ocean. If you said that it's probably most of the water is in the oceans and um, it's probably salt water, you'd be right. Well, but what about fresh water? Where would that be located on Earth? Hmm. Well, that is the thing that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, it's about fresh water. Most of the fresh water is actually found underground and in glaciers. Um, and only a really small amount of it is available for human use. So here is our chapter one question. Why is East Ferris running out of water while West Ferris is not? So East Ferris and West Ferris um, are located here on an island. Here's West Ferris. Here is East Ferris. You can see that they're two very different cities. So our question here is, if there is so much water on Earth and if Ferris water, how could East Ferris possibly be running out of water? Here's East Ferris, they're running out of water. So take a moment to jot down your ideas. How could East Ferris possibly be running out of water? You don't need to jot in the question, just jot down your ideas to this question and go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, moving on. So I want you to think about the ways in which you use water in your daily lives. Like think about your day at home and a normal school day and how do you use water in those places? Take a moment to jot down a few ways that you use water in those places. I know a lot of you right now are probably thinking about hand washing. That's probably a number one thing right now. Jot down a few more. You can go ahead and pause this if you need to. Take a moment to do some jots. All right, moving on. So. Uh, we have a little vocabulary word that I want you to jot down, and the word is resource. This is a very important word for this unit. It is a supply of something that is useful, a resource. So one of the things that we consider a resource here on Earth is water. So I want you to be thinking about that as we move along through here in this unit. All right, so as we said, East Ferris is on an island. It's surrounded by salt water in the ocean, sort of like here uh, in New York, we're surrounded by um, salt water in the ocean, right? Um, and like us, the people on Ferris Island, they need fresh water, right? Just like us here in Brooklyn, the people on Ferris Island need fresh water, not salt weather, water for their daily activities, like cleaning, cooking, all of those things. So taking a look at this um, chart here, take a second to figure out what this chart is trying to communicate to us. Over here on the x-axis, we have the year, right? And we know that it goes up in this direction. And then on the y-axis, we know it goes up in this direction, we have the population size, right? So here are the earlier years, right? And you see that the population size was smaller. And then as the years progressed to the current year, it's gotten later in the years. And then over here, the population size has increased. So the mayor of East Ferris has provided this data about the population. 
So what is it that you are noticing here? Take a second to jot it down. I'll wait. You can pause. So if you notice that the population is increasing, you would be correct. As the years go by, the population increases. It goes up farther. So if you look over here on this dotted line, it sort of represents how the population is probably going to grow in the future. Mayor McKnight expects the population size to continue to grow in his town of East Ferris. So here's a question. What do you think the population size has to do with the water shortage? What do you think the population size, how many people there are, what does that have to do with the water shortage? They don't have enough water. Take a moment to jot down your ideas. All right. So... I know you, some of you had some ideas around that, um, but what we're going to do, be doing today is investigating this question. How can people affect how much fresh water is available? That's what we're going to be investigating. All right, next thing. We are going to be synthesizing. So this is the book that you're going to be reading from today. Um, it's, um, this book is about what causes water shortages around the world and some ways... Um, that people deal with those water shortages. This is water shortages and water solutions. Um, and if you take a look here in the cover, I can already kind of tell you something about um, this. It looks like a boat. It's rusted out. But what do you notice over here? I'm seeing this looks like, I don't know, like a desert or a beach. What would a boat be doing there? I would bet you anything that at one time, if we're talking about water solutions, water shortages, I bet you there was water and it's kind of gone away. So I'm kind of wondering how the people who own this boat are kind of dealing with these water shortages. What are the solutions that they found um, to this problem? All right, so here we have a worksheet. Um, you have a Google form that we've created for you. So it looks slightly different than this, but it's the same thing. Um, you are going to be uh, using these questions here um, and you're going to be recording some ideas from this book that you're going to read, Water Encyclopedia and Water Shortages and Water Solutions. So make sure that you read those directions below. They're going to be on your assignment, okay? Um, here, Water Shortages and Water Solutions, this is um, an excerpt from that book. Um, so here, Water Encyclopedia and Water Shortages and Water Solutions, this, um, this is some graphs here that were in that book. And looking at these graphs, what are some ideas, what are they trying to communicate here? Take a second to examine them, maybe pause the video if you need to, and come up with some ideas. What information are they trying to communicate to you here? All right, so when you go to write about these ideas, I wanna make sure that you're recording some big ideas and not some small details. So for example, um, you might've learned that, you know, a body of water is a lake. And that's just like a small detail about one kind of body of water. It's not really what's important about water on earth. So you really have to be thinking, um, what's a small detail versus like, what's a big idea? So I want to make sure um, that you're thinking about those graphs that we looked at. And when I looked at those graphs, I was thinking that most of the water on Earth is salt water um, in the ocean, right? And most of the fresh water is in glaciers and the groundwater. And there's not a lot of fresh water on Earth that humans can use. So I'm going to jot down this big idea that I learned from Water Encyclopedia, where we found those graphs. And I suggest you jot down uh, maybe my idea and your idea about those graphs. So most of Earth's water is salt water. So there's not a lot of fresh water on Earth. That's something that's really important for us to think about um, as we're exploring these ideas about water shortages. 
So when you go off to do this work, um, jot this down now because you're going to want to definitely fill that in for this first question about how people, how can people affect how much fresh water is available? And here from Water Encyclopedia, here was a big idea from there. Make sure that you get it jotted down. Pause the video if you need to jot it. All right, we're moving on. So next thing we're going to be doing, ideally we would be doing partner reading here. And I do encourage you, if you um, have a friend's FaceTime or some kind of way of, of reaching out to someone in our class, um, or maybe even in another class as a friend of yours, you guys could do this together um, like um, on FaceTime. That would be really, really fun if you have that capability. Um, or even over the phone, it would be fun to read together. All right, so remember, um, you're going to be investigating this question. How can people affect how much fresh water is available? So this is the book that you're going to read. It's uploaded into the assignment. So just take a few minutes. We're going to like look through this book and get ourselves oriented, right? We preview the, the text, and we always know that when we preview, we orient ourselves, we're going to understand it 70% better. It's scientifically proven. All right, so let's just take a second here. You're going to see um, there's an introduction here. Um, I see a caption. It's talking about this is a reservoir. It collects fresh water for people to use. Um, the water is very low because of drought. Hmm, that's a content vocabulary word you might want to pay attention to. The water normally goes to the top of the white part of the hill. That's interesting. Um, and so I'm seeing some um, bold words, resource, that's our vocabulary word again, right? Those things that people are able to use. Uh, drought, that's the word that we saw in bold. That I thought that might be a content vocabulary word, sure enough. And then here we go, solutions, right? And then I'm looking at the caption here. It says the river is polluted and the water is not safe for people to use. Pollution like this contributes to water shortages. So if I'm thinking about what this text is going to be about, I think um, the first sentence kind of gives me a big idea. Um, and it's going to be what the book is going to tell me about. This one here, it says, overuse, pop, pollution, and drought are three major causes of water shortages. So this text is probably going to tell me about the major causes of water shortages. Um, and it relates to our question of how people... Uh, can affect how much water is available. If I think about overuse, that's people probably overusing it. Um, pollution, definitely it's people that pollute. And it comes to drought, I'm not sure how people are connected to that, but I'm kind of interested to find out. All right, so definitely make sure that you jot down that idea in your um, on your sheet when you go to fill that out. So jot this in your notebook now or on your notes because you're going to need to fill it in later. Overuse, pollution, and drought are three major causes of water shortages. That's a big idea from this text. All right, moving on to the next thing. Now, at this point in the video, you can pause and go and read the rest of the book. Um, it's only a few pages. Um, but if you have the opportunity, like I said, discuss and record any other big ideas from the book that you think are going to help you um, with our investigation question. Okay. All right, moving on. Hopefully you had a chance to go through and read the text, um, water shortages and water solutions. If you didn't pause now and go and do that because you can't move on unless you've done that. All right. You've read, you've had a chance to, um, think about these texts and these big ideas. So, um, just take a second to recall what were the big ideas you discussed and recorded as you read the water shortages and water solutions. Okay. Once you've done that, based on what you learned from the two, uh, books, what are your new understandings? What do you now maybe have a question or maybe an answer to the question, um, that we were thinking about, right? How can people affect how much fresh water is available? Now that you've read, what is that new understanding? And that is where you're going to record that in that section of your sheet. So take a second to jot down what your new understanding is. Because you're going to fill it out on the sheet. Now, when I went through here, I thought about this. And one of the things that I was thinking about was that 
Um, people can maybe overuse and pollute this very small amount of fresh water that we have. So there's even less clean fresh water available. And I got that idea by thinking about what I learned from Water Encyclopedia, that there's not a lot of fresh water available. And then what I learned from water shortages and water solutions, that there is not, um, that the humans are a cause of some of these water shortages, right? Like pollution and overuse, right? And so I'm combining, this is the synthesis part, I'm combining these ideas together to come up with my own idea about that. Um, and so now, thinking about those two ideas together, um, I have a new understanding that people maybe can overuse or pollute the limited amount of fresh water that we have. And so there's even less clean fresh water available. All right, this is an important vocabulary word. Jot this down in your notes. Synthesize. Synthesize is a word that means to put together multiple pieces of information in order to understand something. So for the work that we just did, we put together this information from Water Encyclopedia about how there's not a lot of fresh water. And then our idea, the idea from water shortages and water solutions that humans are overusing or polluting this, this uh, fresh water. And then we came up with the synthesis, which is like this new understanding, right? People are overusing or polluting this small amount of fresh water. So there's even less clean fresh water available. Synthesize is the vocabulary. Pause it, jot it down in your notes. All right. So something that just to wrap up that you should know is that water is an important resource that people use every day. Um, like now I know in the news we're really concerned about washing our hands a lot, um, but it's more than that. We use it to take showers. We use it um, to cook our food and to use the toilet. And in every turn, it's, there's ways that we use water that you probably never even thought about. Um, and people rely on um, this and other natural resources like the air, the trees, and the soil. And so why do you think that air, trees, and soil are also important natural resources? Take a moment to jot that down. All right. So after we read about how people can affect water, I want you to think about how uh, human activities could affect these natural resources like air, trees, and soil. What are some things that um, or some actions that humans could do that could have an effect on the air or the trees or the soil. Think about that. Jot it down in your notes. All right, moving forward. This is the end of this lesson, but make sure that you go back through and you fill out the worksheet that is on the, on the Google form and make sure that you definitely answer the questions that um, are after um, you read the text. Bye.